material that we will uh, add to the water is tetron. Okay, so in this case for chlor, we can consider Ag, uh, Ag, NO3. Or uh, uh, when we add Ag and O3 to the water, it is start to do reaction with the uh, chlor. And it is important that we do it very uh, uh, in each step very little of uh, amount because we want to understand when the chlor is finished. When we add uh, Ag and uh, Oc to the water, it start to react with chlor and make AgCl, which can which will be precipitated. Okay, so if you do it uh, drop by drop, then the chlor, uh, become, chlorine become uh, AgCl, and then it's precipitated, and it, the water becomes white. Uh, and uh, after uh, until it finish. But the problem is that we cannot understand when the problem when uh, the C, uh, the Cl in the water will finish. To understand this, we need another material indicator. We, we should understand when uh, the color will finish. Because of that, before starting the experiment, we should add an indicator. In this case, K2CrO4. So before starting the experiment, we add also this material. This material has a characteristic that in competition with color, at first color start to do reaction. So until we have color inside the water, there is no reaction between this uh, material with uh, titrant. So after the color is finished, uh, the K2CrO4 will start to react and it made another substance uh, which is again precipitated into the water, but the color is uh, red. So we can understand uh, uh, that the color is finished in the water. Uh, so we, ha we have how much uh, titrant we add to the water. We usually do the experiment like this. We use a burette for, do for doing this. We, uh, we can, before starting the experiment, we can read the number uh, in the bread. And after, uh, so at first it is in this color, then it becomes white because uh, the, the color is participated, AGCL is participated. And after that, it becomes in this color. So we can understand uh, that uh, color is finished. So we have the first value, we have the second value. So we can measure how much uh, titrant we, we were used. And from that and the formulation, we can calculate how much uh, uh, color was into the water. This is one of the te chemical techniques that you can measure a lot of uh, material with this uh, uh, method. The example that I told here is based on, is titration based on uh, indicator color changing the color. We have another method of titration. It's based on the change in uh, electrical conductivity or pH, pH of the water. We, uh, uh, in this case, the indicator is not the color, is the EC. Because when we have precipitate something, then the EC can change uh, because the materials go out. Also, the pH will change. It depends on the uh, chemical reactions that uh, happen. So we can use electrical conductivity or also pH, pH as an indicator instead of the color. Uh, but the, the main definition of the titration will be uh, the same. We are using some uh, material to uh, do a reaction with the uh, analyte that we can measure, that we want to measure. And then we, can, uh, we, on, we only need an indicator. This indicator can be pH, EC, or color. Okay, uh, is there any question regarding titration? One of another techniques with uh, new technologies that we have is uh, remote sensing. 
uh, remote sensing. Uh, as I understand, some of you are working on the remote sensing. Uh, remote sensing is based on the new technologies that we have to sense um, uh, from the uh, without uh, con 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 uh, connecting to the water. Yes, we have some sensors. Another technique that you can put into the water and um, uh, measure the concentration of different materials. We have several of these and uh, you can find the list in the companies and uh, other companies who um, work to produce uh, um, measurement uh, uh, devices. But uh, we have also some sensors that, that can uh, sense the reflection similar to the photo, uh, uh, photometry and spectrophotometry. You put the uh, covet um, inside the device and they uh, send the light or uh, waves and they you can measure. We also can use the, the um, light of the sun. It also have uh, a wide range of uh, waves. So if you have a sensor to get this reflection then um, um, of course, because d different materials have different reflections. Do you remember that uh, we talk about this one? Uh, exactly the same happen. Uh, if you um, have a sensor that can uh, measure the uh, this uh, um, uh, reflections, if this reflections comes from grass, it would be uh, one shape. And if it comes from water, it has another shape. If it ha comes from, we called it signature, yes, in uh, electromagnetic signature, a a spectral signature, that we can um, define the different materials. And uh, um, with this, you can also use for measurement of some parameters. One of the t parameters that I, uh, now I want to describe about it, and then I will let the others who have more experience about the uh, image process, uh, uh, about the remote sensing, tell me and tell us uh, um, what other parameters we can um, get and we can measure about the water quality. But one of the most important one is turbidity and SPM, yes, suspended particulate matters. We want to uh, uh, measure them with the aid of the remote sensing. I will uh, uh, tell uh, four case study and uh, after that I also uh, give the papers to you uh, because th th there are from different uh, scientific papers. Maybe it would be useful for, uh, uh, for your research area and some other papers that I have about this. This is uh, one of the uh, case studies. They try to use uh, SPOT one of the uh, one of the sensors for uh, uh, to uh, measure the uh, SPM suspended particulate materials in uh, one of the bays. And this is the uh, result. You can see the different concentration with different colors are here. This uh, this uh, dark gray shows uh, 100 and for more than 700 uh, is very light. So it is in reverse. When it is dark, the concentration is low. And when it is higher, the concentration, you can see that uh, it can show very well how this, the concentration changes in this uh, uh, part of the uh, MS uh, bay. And here you can see also it is two uh, different um, resolution. They used pictures to uh, two different resolution because they wanted to know if they use a more high quality picture or less high quality picture, how much difference would be then, you know, because the um, uh, when you use uh, high resolution, you have a huge amount of uh, data from the uh, satellites because um, when you get a normal picture, you have only three, three color, R, G, B and you have three value for each pixel. Even in these pictures, if you have a uh, 100 dpi picture, I mean 100 pixel in one inch, then you have 100 multiplied by three 
uh, data. But it, when it becomes HD and mm, it goes, the resolution goes higher, so the data becomes more and more. But when you consider a, a, a full spectrum, then you will understand that how much uh, would uh, so much data you have, and analyzing this data is usually hard. So it is better to have uh, if we can get a good uh, result from a less resolution. So it's better to go <coughs> to that. Again, you can see even you can uh, see the uh, the different colors, which shows where the concentration is higher and uh, where is lower. This is the uh, uh, same study. And here, the final result, after they choose the best uh, um, resolution, they get to this image. And you can see the uh, concentration as uh, milligram per liter. Uh, or with different colors. So it shows that these parts, you have more colors, a more uh, concentration, and here you have the minimum concentration of the materials. And it is understandable because it's far from there. Uh, another, uh, if you see the literature, you can use uh, these data from remote sensing for calibrating calibration of the models also. We have different models who can uh, model the uh, movement of the sediments in the sea, in the rivers, and everywhere. You know, you, uh, you know it. Uh, for calibration of these models, you need data. You, sh you need to have the concentration of the uh, um, uh, suspended materials in different parts, and then you can calibrate the uh, model. Some of the research pa paper try to use the data that get from the satellites to uh, calibrate the models. I will I bring uh, two of these <coughs> uh, case studies. It is uh, uh, again in MSPAY that they use uh, these um, uh, the result of this model. And this is the results that they uh, bring out from the uh, measurements that they have done for, with uh, remote sensing. Again, you can see there is a good uh, mm, uh, agreement with their uh, results. I mean, uh, uh, they use this data to calibrate they, in this model. And you can see, more or less, they have uh, similar results. The model that we, uh, they use is BAW. for uh, which can use for base. Uh, this technique um, is not very useful for the rivers. I didn't see that they use for river because the rivers are usually smaller, so uh, we don't have so much pixel inside the river. And also the depth is smaller, then it uh, um, affected uh, more, and you can uh, you cannot compare so much, but when uh, we have C, because the depth is much more, then it's easier to get the data. This is uh, again the calibration from the Frisian Bay. This is the result of the spot, and this is the result of the GKSS model, another model. And you can see again, we have uh, good results. This is for the, uh, shows the concentration. And again, we will see that we have a good result for, for that. This is the, another case study, uh, which used MODIS uh, to measure the concentration in different parts. Uh, because this uh, this is the original picture from the paper, but I add also a picture from the Google map, then you can see better how is the uh, situation. This, this blue picture is the same. The white color here shows the water, and the black uh, 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 one shows the uh, land. So uh, this is one lake, and this is here. In these two parts were studied. Uh, were studied uh, in the uh, in this paper in this journal paper. Oh, sorry. 
At first, they come and get some samples from a different part of the, uh, because you need to calibrate again uh, your, uh, the, the, when you have some pictures from the uh, top, you need to calibrate. So they, uh, they come and get some samples from different parts and then uh, they try to use the image to um, colorate between the data and that they have measured on the land with the pictures that they get from the uh, satellite. And you, you can see that uh, there is a good uh, agreement. This is the uh, SPM, or here total suspended matter. Uh, the total suspended matter that they measured is on the vertical, and the total uh, suspended matter that they get from the Moody's is on the horizontal line. You see that there is a good agreement, and the line uh, mm, uh, we have not so much uh, tolerance, and uh, um, it can uh, um, we can get the data very uh, well. So if uh, and in this picture they use the uh, first bond of the Moody's, and this is the formula that they uh, produce for that. So for this, for with this, if you have the Moody's bond, uh, the the first bond of the Moody's then you can calculate the total suspended material in this place with this formula. And uh, again, they try to check two resolution of the uh, maps. And you can see, if uh, the, uh, again, uh, we have here less concentration and here more concentration, but the results are more or less the same. There are not so much differences. And then after this calibration, they used for here, for down part of the uh, bay. It was, uh, we get calibration here, and then here, again, they check it. You can see that uh, even they can show the uh, flow direction with the data that they have. They can understand where the sediments movement because it is for two days, for two different days. This is for, uh, if I remember, the 21st of October, and this is for the 23rd uh, of October. Two days uh, different, and you can see how much change happened. So uh, we can, uh, you can see that uh, if we use the remote sensing data because they are easily available and they. Uh, they are doing every day, so you can uh, have a very detailed how the uh, sediment transport happened because you can check different days, every day, even in months, in seasons, different seasons. You, you can really uh, act, uh, see how the sediment transport happened. And with uh, measurements uh, in the field, it, it is not possible. It is so expensive to do it. So uh, it is very good if we can develop some uh, methods to uh, doing that. But uh, we should consider that uh, remote sensing is a very, mm, uh, yes, we are going to use it for our major water remote sensing, but you know that remote sensing is uh, based on uh, physics, uh, uh, very high technique, uh, high uh, technique uh, physics and you need a, a good knowledge of the uh, light and uh, physics of the lights and how they uh, these energies move in different mediums and how we can analyze them uh, and also you, you need a very good information about image processing and signal processing you need all this information to uh, get rich to a very good results. If you see the papers, I didn't bring the theoretical parts. The theoretical parts is very complicated because you should know know these um, rules. I was I, I only wanted to show which kind of techniques we have that we can use. Maybe uh, you don't need it um, uh, in your research. If you are going to work on remote sensing, then you will need it, and of course you will go to more details to know how it works. And now I would be happy that the people who are working on the remote sensing, if uh, they add some information about it or if they see some other research that I have done about this. Do you have any idea about? Uh, 
I know that you work on the uh, mor morphology. Mor do you have any um, experience about the? Mm -hmm. Any other one that who work on remote sensing? Only you? I've heard. You also, yes. Do you have any idea? I was working on uh, wetland. Mm -hmm. Wetland. Wetland. Yeah. So, sir, uh, working on wetland on the basis of different different resolution, and I have no idea about what. Uh, about the water quality parameter. Okay. Some, some of our students, they started working on Guam. Yes, mm -hmm. Guam is from uh, NRSC, National Remote Science Center at uh, Hyderabad. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's from uh, International uh, Center over there. And uh, only for India, uh, outside India, they are just mapping mm -hmm. uh, the resources like uh, water supply, maybe power lines, electrical supply, or maybe mean exactly that uh, health facilities of the just of them. They are going to the field, they are talking in front of the field, they are talking to the field. Mm, yeah, yeah. And uh, that's my husband and I'll put that. Okay. So, uh, okay, yes, we'll start it. Yeah. Uh, so, by the help of one bottle, we can access data from anywhere. Satellite imagery free of cost. Uh, in the, uh, yes, yes, yes. In some, some, uh, uh, some of the maps are free of. Yes. European Agency uh, launched Sentinel, Sentinel satellite imagery. Mm -hmm. Ten meter resolution. Mm -hmm. Thirteen what? Sp uh, European space. Uh -huh. Sentinel. Yes, yes. Okay, I should open the. The uh, next topic is about the climate uh, change effect uh, on the um, pollutant. Uh, again, I saw one of you, I think, working on the uh, climate change effects. Uh, is he here? Who, who was working on the climate change effects? Uh, yes, you. Yes. Uh, okay, I will t uh, talk and then you can uh, add your experience about the effect of... You didn't have... You want to start on working, okay. So I hope that you get some idea about it. Um, again, I prepared some uh, papers for you that I will give you, uh, you about uh, the climate change effects, and I will uh, also present some of the results here. But before that, we will uh, explain. Uh, we will um, discuss a little bit about how climate change can affect the pollutant uh, in uh, and. Uh, quality parameters inside the water resources. The main uh, effect of the climate change is uh, briefly two parameters. One, temperature, and then rainfall. So the climate change at first increasing the temperature, yes. And in the second, the rainfall will be affected in some, um, and, uh, in different ways. One, distribution, maybe the distribution change during, during the time, the intensity can change, and also the type. For example, uh, 
in uh, many uh, in some uh, places which always they had um, snow nowadays the um, amount of snow decreased and, and mostly they have rain so this uh, uh, change of uh, kind uh, uh, i mean from a snow to the rain and the top and the type the type of the uh, snow and rain can affect uh, the quality parameters inside the rivers and water resources and lakes. Temperature. Temperature itself can have a lot of effect on the chemical process inside the uh, systems. You know, uh, t uh, when the temperature increase, the bacterial activities can uh, increase. Chemical reactions. Some of the chemical reactions that they get uh, heat and need heat, then they will be increased. And some of the chemical reaction, which is reversed, that then make free the heat, then uh, it's uh, in reverse. They will decrease it. So the temperature itself can uh, affect on the. Uh, also, uh, it can affect on the uh, dissolved oxygen. Uh, you know that the amount of oxygen which is dissolved in the water is uh, uh, affected by the temperature. So if the temperature changes, it can change. Uh, and also the, uh, the um, decay process and everything can uh, um, change by uh, temperature. But the, the situation is, is not as easy as we are talking about only temperature. This uh, process also uh, can affect so much. For example, if we have, uh, if the intensity of rain increases and we have a uh, more rain, then we have more runoff. Yes. When we have more runoff, then we, uh, we bring more pollutant into the rivers, and uh, the, the farmers in rivers they should use more nitrate again because they know that when when there is a rain and it's uh, uh, the nitrate that they add. Run, uh, uh, run away, so they need again to add nitrate. So uh, again, it increases the pollution. So we have a complex of the things that the climate change can um, affect it. And if you see the uh, ar uh, um, articles which is related to this, then they have different uh, uh, results. Sometimes they see inc decrease instead of increase because of different. Because in another part, when we have more intensity and when we have mo more discharge into the river, maybe it dilutes the, um, the concentration and make it decrease. So in one part, it can increase by um, uh, leaching the material and washing them towards the river. And in another part, if the amount of water is more, then the concentration decreases. So it's not easy to discuss how can uh, um, happen. So we need cases like this. I mean, you should see if for Pantanagar what happens if the rain intensity change and if the again here the numerical models can help us. I will say one of the models now, uh, Mike Shi. I don't know have you ever heard about it or not. I think it's good. In this course we were we were talking about the basics of the water quality, but it's good that you have some ideas. There is two models that you can use for kind of things. One SWM M, and one Mike Shi. Mike Shi again is a, a software which is from uh, a same company, DHI, the same com company of uh, Mike. And this uh, software can combine other softwares from the Mike. I mean, uh, FIFLO, which is for ground water flow and uh, Mike, which is for surface water, and also uh, other models, which is for basins. They combine these, and uh, then he, he can understand in one basin, if you change the land management, the intensity of rain change, what happens in downstream. So it's the ideal model to see the effect of the climate change and these things, because you can change the parameters, and you see what happens. In the mm, in your uh, real situation, so one of the models that it can have is, uh, this one. Uh, in this graph, you can see how uh, uh, the things are uh, uh, related to each other. You can see when the temperature goes high, drought can happen, and it can also uh, affect the situation. It can affect the uh, soils and also. 
uh, I mean, uh, all these parts are complicated to each other. Uh, because if you, uh, how is your land use? If your land use change also, then it can be uh, affected. How much pollutants going to the rivers? Uh, so it is not only the effect of temperature which is uh, affected by temperature. We have different things that happen together, and uh, the climate change can affect our uh, the uh, system. Uh, this paper that I bring here and I will give you. This is a review. Uh, it is for 2009, it's not so real, but it is a uh, review and it's very good uh, um, to get uh, knowledge about how the climate change affect the uh, pollutant, uh, um, the water quality parameters and why it happens. And it brings different results and you see that the results are sometimes uh, are opposite each other and uh, and he will explain why it happens because of this complexity okay, that uh, we cannot get to a point very fast and easily. Uh, he, uh, here is the um, uh, a study in Czech Republic that they have done on effect of climate change on uh, water quality parameters in the uh, Czech Republic. Here uh, they have data from 1960 to 2010. Uh, this is the temperature data. Uh, after scaling, um, it shows that uh, uh, this data become uh, processed and these two graphs happen. And you will see that from uh, 1977 or something around this, we have a slight decrease in the temperature. So they use the data of the water quality with, for these years to see the effect of the temperature on because they have a complete data of nitrate and other uh, parameters in the rivers. So uh, and and from different years, and we will see the increase in the temperature. So we can use this data and also other data to uh, reach to the point that how climate change will affect the uh, data. Here we have there is the uh, results about the nitrate. They had seven uh, station they, um, uh, in seven parts in the Czech Republic and they uh, for different rivers and they check this data from these rivers. And you you see that the nitrate is affected with temperature and it decreases when the temperature increases. The, uh, it decreases. There is two idea. One, because of the denitrification and um, this process becomes faster with the temperature. But their study showed that it is not because they go to the water treatment plants, they get their data. Because water treatment plants also, uh, when we have climate change, the temperature of the water inside the uh, water treatment plants also increase. And they check their data and they said that they see that there is not a very real change in their reaction rates and in these things. So they understood that this decrease is not related directly to the temperature. I mean, this is not the problem. So they, um, they believe that it's related to the uh, plants which comes into the river. When the temperature increases, so we have more plants into the rivers. So the nitrate is used so much more and the nitrate is decreased. They relate this uh, decrease to this part and also we have the same decrease into the about the NH, uh, NH4 and but about NH4 you will see that uh, till something around 7 uh, degree uh, we have a a very precise chain. If the temperature increase more than 7 degree, then there is not a very change in the thing. So I mean that if it's go to 27, uh, 28 and higher, we will see not, not much more change in the uh, NH4. We have only the change till 7. So it is not affected with climate uh, in the winters it can affect it by the climate change. But in the summer, we, have, we cannot see the effect of climate change. 
about uh, uh, phosphat, they didn't change so much change into the uh, data. You can see only in one station. Uh, this is because this is uh, you know they are they are selected graphs. They are not uh, come because they had seven mm, part their study. They bring uh, uh, some of the data. For example, this is uh, for one of the stations, and uh, only in this station they had a very uh, slow increase in the mm, uh, phosphat total total phosphat. About BOD also there is not so much change. And this is, uh, but about this coliform, they have a uh, increase with temperature. Again, which is understandable. When we have um, bacteria, the bacteria with temp increasing the temperature, their activities increase, and the population will increase. This is uh, uh, the results. Uh, from uh, my PhD thesis, which was uh, working on the sorption process, sorption of the uh, cadmium to the sediments. And here also you can see with the increase in the temperature, this is the temperature. Of, uh, I, I do, uh, no, uh, at first I describe about this curve. Uh, here is the time, and here is the amount of the material which sorbed to the sediments and the, uh, it is microgram of the pollutant to each gram of the sediment. It, for example, when it is 2, it shows that 2 gram of the sediment have 2 microgram of the pollutant inside itself. And uh, it shows the um, change uh, of the adsorbed material with times. And you can see that the, uh, these curves will change with the temperature. When we have 22 degree, then this curve will produce. And when we have 30 degree, this curve will be produced. So even on the sorption, I mean sorption of the pollutant like phosphor, heavy metals, and any other uh, uh, organic uh, pollutants which can absorb to the uh, sediments in the river, uh, temperature can affect it. So if we have climate change, then the sorption can be much more. But in this case, only cadmium, because uh, um, sorption process, again, uh, uh, we have two kind of sorption. Some, uh, one, one needs the heat and needs, uh, <coughs> and the other need energy to take place, and the other one release the energy. If it release, release the energy, then when the temperatures go higher, then it would, it would be decreased. So, of course, temperature can affect also on sorption process. But, uh, you know, you need a, a lot of change, 8 degree. So, maybe in uh, 20 years later, we will see the effect much more. This is uh, another study from Portuguese, I think, yes, Portuguese, and it's uh, it's done on uh, in the um, water distribution system inside the cities in the pipes, and it is related to the chlor. You, you know, one of the uh, water quality parameters in inside the cities is chlorine. You know, because we add chlor into the water uh, and um, to eliminate the bacteria. And for us, it is important the concentration in different parts be the same. And uh, when the, uh, the, the temperature change, of course, this process also can be affected. So even the uh, water authorities, which is responsible for uh, an water distribution system, they should consider these things because they want they want to have a uh, mm, uh, normal distribution of um, chlorine in the, uh, to in total uh, distribution system, uh, and when the mm, reaction rates are changed, so maybe in some parts it goes lo uh, lower and in some parts it goes higher. So they should consider the effect of the climate change of the 
uh, transport of the chlor inside their distribution system. Uh, we'll, um, this is the burning equation for the uh, decay of the chlor with time and they usually consider it as two step uh, um, decay process, one fast and one slow. And uh, here you will see that uh, with the, their different exper uh, experiments that they have, again uh, these uh, values are changed. This is the temperature based on the uh, Kelvin, 1 uh, divided by T. So when it's increasing, uh, uh, it shows that the temperature decreases. So in this di direction, the temperature decreases. So you will, and this is the, this uh, graphs is the, the blue one is related to the, uh, to this parameter and the red one is related to this parameter. So this is the fast coefficient rate and this is the uh, slow coefficient rate. I, I, so th I said that there is, they consider the, uh, the decay of the color as a two process, one process which acts fast and the one which is uh, slower. And so we have two coefficients for that. These coefficients are changed with temperature in all uh, experiments that they have. The blue one is for the fast and the uh, red one is for the slow. And you will see that the change for the slow one is much more than the fast one. So again, the color decay inside the uh, uh, network distributions uh, of the water inside the cities also can be affected with the uh, temperature change. Okay, this part is also finished. Do you have any question about this or any comments, any ideas? Do you think, uh, I, I will ask a question, do you think temperature is uh, the change, uh, when we, we want to consider the effect of the climate change on the uh, pollutants, nitrate for example, in the river, do you think uh, it is more affected by temperature for the nitrate or more affected with the um, change in the discharges? Uh, we said that temperature can increase the um, the denitrification and these things, and also uh, it can affect the plants inside the rivers. Uh, and with this, the process of the usage of the nitrate will increase. Yes, in one part, and and uh, another part we have the change in the rain, in the uh, intensity of the rain and the consumption of the nitrate of the farmers and other things on the other side. Which, which would be more effective uh, in, for example, in, uh, in India? More than, more than 75 percent of the applied nitrogen source of uh, fertilizer. Mm -hmm. So, the nitrate, nitrate is lost through the leaching process that is incurred by iron and fog. Yes. So, uh, as you mentioned earlier also yesterday, that uh, they plan, they schedule the nitrogen application time uh, with the weather forecasting. But in India, this uh, uh, is generally applied in, applied in broadcasting system. Mm -hmm. So it is generally applied in broadcasting form. And so uh, there will be rainfall. So most of the uh, most of the nitrogen nitrogenous fertilizer that has been applied, it is lost through leaching process rather yeah. than temperature. Leaching, it, it will just. Uh, flows down to the groundwater. Groundwater or comes to the river runoff, so but with runoff or with hydraulically connected groundwater and surface. 
Okay, so uh, you see, you think that um, the nitrate within, in the river will increase with this rainfall? Yeah. With this chart? But we have another point. Maybe uh, the rain is um, much more, and uh, yes, it leached the nitrate, in, but the amount of water will increase more. Then the concentration can decrease. This is another point. Do you, do you, uh, do you understand what yes, I mean? Yes, I For example, you, you have one gram of sh sugar or nitrite. If you add one li uh, uh, glass of water to in it, it will be dissolved. Yes, And it makes one concentration. But if you add two uh, uh, glass of water on it, again it dissolves. But the concentration will be less. Yes, I am concerned with your opinion. <coughs> sir, it is, it is that nitrogen fertilizer have more volatile in form. So, I, I do agree, sir. If we, in summer season, uh, the temperature goes around 40 to 45 degrees Celsius around in, um, uh, uh, in, uh, um, as say, in Banarash, maybe, which is the location, sir. exact location of India? Yeah, 40 plus. It's a separate region. Yes, sir. If I go to 40 plus, how yes, uh, Above 40. Okay. So in, uh, in that case, yeah, in that case, uh, it will be, uh, it will be lost through temperature, sir. But actually, at that time, June, July, in the month of June, July, there's high rainfall. The annual average rainfall of uh, Banaras means in, the, in that region, particular 1,000 millimeter rainfall, mm -hmm. 1,100 millimeter rainfall per year. So, at that time, I do agree that it may be lost through the temperature or mm -hmm. um, through the rain reaching process. But the rest of the time, uh, the due to the uh, due to the proper management of nitrogen fertilizer application time. Mm -hmm. so in proper management, so uh, there will be, I think, there will be more loss through the rainfall, sir. No, sorry, leaching process that is excess rainfall. Okay, so if we can, we want to sum up, you will believe that temperature is less uh, effective itself than the yes, because the example that I also said is also again in this direction. That, uh, but we cannot say one hundred percent because. There are lots of things that affect, because sometimes the climate change uh, will mm, lead to some decrease in the, gr uh, in the mm, reverse discharges. Then, the, but the farmers don't change so much the nitrate and these things, so it can increase the nitrate. So there are lots of uh, possible activities and things that can happen that we can have a different results and and we should consider all of them we, we should have a conceptual model what is the things that will affect the result finally and what of them are happening re in real in in a for example in pantanagar in delhi in whatever in the world that we are i mean it is it is a case study it is not something that you make a general you should see you know, uh, when the climate change happens in one place, uh, what conditions will change? Uh, the, the discharge of the river, the intensity of the rain, the temperature, the plants, um, and what process will affect which about the process which will affect the pollutant transport. We will discuss in more details in the uh, next steps which kind of process will affect, and then you can see the, which pr when um, when we want to model the pollutant transport in one river or groundwater. At first, we should determine which process will happen uh, inside this. Is it biological? Is it chemicals? Physicals? All of this process you will put right, and then you will choose which of them are going to model, and then you should see climate change how will affect this process. And how the dish and with all together, you can understand the effect of the climate change and predict what will be happen in the future. So, temperature is also equivalent to the nitrate uh, excess nitrate formation because uh, in our bacterial system, uh, if excess nitrogen nitrogen is present in soil, yeah, they yeah. Uh, denitrifying yes, yes. to ammonia. And then after they mix with water and formation of ammonium hydroxide, and which is responsible for the alkalinity of soil. Yeah, and yeah. When our uh, soil is alkali, then our whole biomass will disturb because yeah. a lot of plants they not uh, uh, tolerant.
that type of alkalinity or salinity or different type of much more pH. So whole body and uh, whole biomass and our flora and fauna both are disturbed by temperature or yeah, of, of course. Uh, use of uh, ammonia. So uh, our country uh, uh, start planning for organic farming. Ah, yeah, yeah. And it shows that how much is complicated when you want to consider the effect of the climate change. Because even uh, only the temperature, when you consider it, a lot of things will change. It's not easy to understand what happened. A lot of process with changing the temperature will, will change. So we should consider all of this when we want to see what would be the real effect of the climate change. Of course, the temperature will change everything. Okay, now we are going to talk about um, how we can measure, uh, uh, not measure, how we can uh, state the situation of the water quality and uh, how we can discuss about the water quality inside a river. Is it good? Is it bad? And how we can compare two water resources to each other. If uh, the water resources of India is in a better condition or a water resources in another country. And inside the, um, uh, um, uh, uh, India, we want to see if this water resource is better for drinking or the other one is better. Uh, we need uh, some parameters that we can discuss about uh, uh, and consider is it good or bad. We will going to uh, discuss about this subject. WHO uh, present uh, again there is a report uh, from the United Nations. United Nations website is also uh, always have a very good information regarding to different uh, things like water quality, health, everything. They're, they have very good reports and usually you can get this report and you have a valuable information about uh, all over the world. Again I will give you this report which, is, which they prepared about the um, water quality in uh, global water quality index. They prepared a global water quality index to um, uh, uh, compare different countries and uh, different uh, uh, yes different countries in different years. How is the uh, water quality situation in their uh, uh, countries as a water resources? But I will use uh, this date and uh, some of the subjects here to discuss about the uh, water quality index that we will uh, we want to learn in this course. But before I go to the water quality index, uh, we start with m in more details how we can comp uh, say if a water quality in some place is good or bad. Till now we understood that when we want to uh, um, understand about the water quality of a glass of water that they gave to you, it's, um, we should have some parameters to check if it is good or not. If for a normal person, they use, uh, and for even us, when we have no uh, devices, we can use, we can trust only to the taste and to the smell and to the appearance. We have these three parameters that we can get. But when we have more uh, devices and more uh, techniques, then we can go to in more details and more parameters. Here is a list which, uh, of chemicals that WHO uh, said and uh, to, con to um, see if a water resources is good or bad. And we have a list of the water. WHO uh, divide these uh, water parameters in two categories. One related to the health and one regarded to acceptability. You see guideline type in the guideline type. Health and acceptability. Because some of the parameters when goes out of the um, standard range, then it is bad for your health. For example, it produce cancer or it may be uh, um, toxic and uh, have a very fast uh, effect and the person become uh, have a real problem. So it, it, these kind of things are considered as health. Uh, like any cadmium for example, 
it's related to your health. If it goes outside, then it's uh, um, dangerous. As appearance or turbidity, for example, hardness. If the water is hardness, then you don't like it. When you make a tea, then it, it doesn't taste good. But it doesn't, and maybe some people don't drink it. But it is not related to their health. So it's related to acceptability. Uh, 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 if the people like it or not. So they considered as uh, uh, he, uh, it divided to this and get some standard values for that. For example, about the sodium. If the sodium in the water is a little bit higher, and then uh, again, it's not dangerous uh, that you will have a lot of problems. Uh, it changed the taste. So again, it is acceptability. And also sulfate, total dissolved solid, terbivity. Even when there is some suspended material in the water, again, it's not like that that you make problems with the health becomes a problem. Uh, but uh, maybe the people don't before that. Uh -huh. These guidelines are was from WHO, but we have uh, other guidelines that uh, we also talk about it. For example, uh, EU. US, EPA, and Australia. And I told you here, only as an example, we bring uh, again different guidelines to, ch to see that how much uh, they are different. For example, for iron, you see WHO has 0 0.3, EU have 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So, uh, maybe most of the countries use this WHO, which is for world. Again, I come back to this slide. One of the methods that when you want to see uh, if a water resource is good or not, the best way is to check all these parameters and see health-related parameters have problem, then this water have, have problem for drinking. Now I want uh, to use this technique for a case study to uh, uh, analyze the uh, water for irrigation uh, regarding to the uh, irrigation uh, or not. The, the variables that uh, were studied was electrical con conductivity, uh, Na, Ca, Mg, K, HCO, C, Cl, SO4, pH, turbidity, and temperature. These are the variables that we uh, considered in this study. You will uh, uh, use these curves. We can make these curves for different stations to see how change the electrical conductivity. And based on your uh, ideas, you can see uh, if which station is better for get. For example, if you want to get a uh, in this way, you have the distribution of the electrical conductivity in the systems, uh, chlor and everything. You can see, and then you can decide which station is the best place for getting the water. For example, if you see uh, uh, here uh, is the mm, less easy, so maybe this place is the best that you can get on your water. And you can make your pump station in this place to get the water. If you have the data for different uh, mm, years, then you are more sure that uh, if you see every year here is the best place, so you are more sure that this place is better. And even if you add the guidelines here, for example, what is the guidelines for irrigation systems about the EC, if you put it like a red line, then you can understand which of them is out of the uh, uh, guideline or which of them under the guideline. Again, for turbidity, you can do this. Also, for other um, parameters like 
uh, SCO7, NA, CL and SO4. In this way you have a view of what is going on the uh, reverse. But the problem is that you cannot get to a point easily. For example, you will see in, uh, in one station some SO4 is below the uh, guideline and other parameters is outside. You cannot reach to a point finally is it good or bad. Yes, you, because you have a lot of numbers. You know, you know the, the WHO had more than 50 parameters. Yes, if uh, even for this we considered only 12, 10 or 12 parameters. So you have 10 station, and you have uh, if we measure every um, every year four or five times, then you will see you have a huge amount of data, and you cannot understand finally is what this water is good or bad because sometimes it's going down, sometimes it's going higher. So we usually need some indexes, some uh, uh, numbers that tell us is it good or bad. For example, it says it's 100 percent safe, 900 percent safe. We need a number, we need a, we need a data to um, show us. Because of that, they, uh, the scientists start based on their experiences and the results of the water on the plants they decide they start to make some graphs some uh, parameters that show us that I explain a little bit about it what for example sodium adsorption ratio yes this parameter with uh, along with electrical conductivity uh, all of you knows that one of the indicators of uh, um, irrigation water and we have this and you know this graph of course yes when you have the electrical conductivity and you have the, the SAR then you can find which class your water is it and if your water is good or not this is what we are looking for because the other is if you show this number even to the engineers they become uh, uh, confused if this water is good or bad because they see it, it sometimes SO4 is higher sometimes it's downer you cannot understand finally is it what is this water is good for irrigation or not yes if the water is perfect and always all the uh, parameters all the time is good nobody in doubt and um, choose it but when it's has fluctuation and of course every water sources have uh, fluctuations and uh, it becomes more complicated but in this much more easier because you have a class of water and you can understand that the water is in this class or not and here is the result of that river that we have done we have the uh, EC of different station and SAR of different station and we had the class of the river. You see how much it becomes easier. On that part we had different graph which cannot understand uh, anything from that. But now for a station water and is it good for use it or not. So it makes it easier. But yes, rest. So we can uh, yeah take a break and then we continue with the index.